take our give you our, our questions. Go ahead, Ali Mills. Ali Mills. Chairman Carper, Ranking Member Capito, and members of the Committee of Environmental and Public Works, thank you for inviting me to testify on this vitally important topic. My name is Allie Mills. I am the president of Plum Contracting in Pennsylvania and an active member of Associated General Contractors of America, AGC. Plum Contracting is a family-operated business for 42 years located just east of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. In that time, we have become a high-valued highway and bridge contractor in Pennsylvania while also having a successful subcontracting sub division installing highway edge drains along the East Coast. I want to start by thanking the committee for their work and leadership in the development of the IIJA. The IIJA represents the most significant infusion of investment in our infrastructure since the enactment of the interstate highway system in the mid-1950s. I also want to thank the committee for continuing to prioritize formula dollars to states through the core highway formula programs and ask that you continue to do so in the future rather than creating new grant programs, especially discretionary ones. A recent survey of AGC members found that 93% of the construction companies are experiencing long lead times and or allocations for construction materials. Infrastructure projects costs continue to climb and rising construction material prices and shortages. Material price increases have doubled or even tripled in some cases. Supply chain disruptions from the pandemic have inflated the cost of construction materials and made project delivery schedules and product availability more uncertain. Today, my company is experiencing an unprecedented burden with bidding and procurement of new projects. We are bidding jobs, plugging numbers because suppliers will not quote projects due to fluctuations in material pricing or lack of material supply. We are seeing Suppliers quote projects but not sign purchase orders so they are not held responsible for honoring their price if material prices do increase. Once we begin construction, the new normal is delays on a project because of supply issues. From a project scheduling perspective, it has turned into a nightmare. As you know, the IIJA included the Build America, Buy America Act, which expands domestic sourcing requirements to all construction materials on federally assisted projects. I want to be clear, AGC supports sensible efforts to encourage the growth of America's domestic manufacturing capacity to restore balance to the supply chain. However, these new requirements have created significant confusion among industry about the difference between a construction material and a manufactured product and what manufacturing processes must occur domestically for construction materials. To address this issue, USDO team must identify a specific list of which construction materials will have to be Buy America compliant and which materials will be considered a manufactured product. To date, they have not done this. There is also heartburn within the construction industry about potential future project delays due to the need for a Buy America waiver and the low likelihood of being granted one based on history. While we still await clarification from OMB, the initial director of the Made in America office has since left just weeks before the implementation has begun. To put it nicely, implementation of a new Buy America requirements is off to a rocky start and the construction industry is very concerned and confused. A great way to maximize the investment in IIJA would be to implement the environmental review and permitting reforms that were mandated in the bill. By implementing these provisions, we believe that the costs associated with delivering projects will be reduced without jeopardizing environmental protections. AGC also has concerns about recent changes to the National Environmental Policy Act in the Council on Environmental Quality's Phase 1 rulemaking. These changes add bureaucratic steps in an already burdensome and slow process require more time-consuming analysis, increase litigation risk for project decisions, and encourage agencies to impose requirements that go beyond CEQ regulations and would slow agency decision-making and discourage the transformational investments needed across the country. Labor shortages also continue to be a top concern for the industry with the most construction firms exper expecting labor conditions to remain tight. Dis by firms increasing pay and benefits, the workforce shortage continues. The industry is facing the effects of decades of policies directing students to attend four-year institutions as the only career options. 
Again, I thank the committee for the opportunity to opportunity to testify today. I appreciate its continued efforts to help improve the nation's infrastructure and enact policies that create good paying jobs in America. I look forward to answering any questions. Thanks very much. I'm going to when we do q and I'm going to come back to your last point about uh, the uh, kind of skills sets that we're graduating students from, from our colleges and universities, community colleges. It's a good point. I'll, we'll come back to that. Thank you.